In the last masterclass video, which you can find in the link above, we went over everything you need to know about the MPC's main screen. In this video, we're gonna jump into the browser, talk about all the shortcuts and how you can quickly and efficiently browse all your files inside the MPC browser. Now let's take a look at the browser and how you can maximize the usage of the browser and all of its shortcuts. To get to the browser on the hardware, the MPC1 and the MPCX have a dedicated browse button. On the Live and the Live 2, you have to hold Shift and hit the menu button. You can also access a browser from the main page. Hit Assign Samples, and then go to the lower left Browse tab to access the browser. Another way to access the browser is to hit the menu button on the hardware, and then go to the upper right corner and hit browser. Also a quick way to access the browser is simply to hold down the menu and then hit the corresponding pad to access the browser. Now once we're in the browser we essentially have three main parts on the screen. The locations both on the left side and the top, the filter section which contains search and then quick filters, and then below that the results. First let's start on the left with places. Under places you will see the internal hard drive, this is an overview of all the files you have on the root of the internal hard drive. Then any external storage, connected USBs, hard drives, or SD cards. One note, you need to have these hard drives formatted in either EXFAT, FAT32, NTFS, or X4. EXFAT being the recommended format. You can directly format from the MPC. You would highlight any incompatible drives, then hold down shift and hit format drive at the bottom of the screen. This menu is also where you can check and see how much storage space is used on a drive. Simply select the drive and then hit drive info to see how much space is used and how much space is still free. Also from this menu, you have the ability to load all in the lower right. This is handy when you want to, let's say, select a folder with a bunch of snares or hi-hats and load every single sample from that folder into the sample pool. Now below that, you have MPC documents. This is a shortcut to internal MPC documents. By going directly to MPC documents, you're going to see everything that exists on the internal storage of the MPC. This is anything from exports, to plugin presets, to programs, to progressions, to projects, anything that is stored on the internal memory of the MPC. Now below that, we'll find a scrolling alphabetical list of all the expansions that are found on this MPC. I find this much faster than using the dedicated expansions tab on the upper right. Sometimes with the graphics, we may not be able to see the text that is inside of the graphic. And sometimes it may not have a graphic and it will just default and generate a generic cover to that. So I find going into this alphabetical list to be much easier to navigate and get to the expansion that I want to work with. Now back to the top, we have content. Content is a quick way to access categories on the internal memory. Note that this is only for the internal memory. Drums will show you all the drum kits that you have on any expansions that are installed on the internal memory of the MPC. Instruments will show all the instruments. Clips will show all the clips. Samples, all the samples. My Files is essentially another shortcut to MPC documents, as you see on the top of the screen. And Splice allows you to access your Splice folder. If you have a Splice account, you are able to directly sync your Splice to the MPC. In order to do that, we would go into the menu, click on the top on the setting, and then scroll all the way to the bottom to Splice. Log into our account. A few things to note is you will need an internet connection. And also when you connect your splice, it's going to sync every single sample that you have in your library. So if you have a large library, you're going to need a lot of storage space and also a little bit of time to allow that sync to happen. All the locations under the content tab are hard set. You cannot change them. Now, even though you can't customize the content tab filters, you can use the upper five folders to create your own five favorite shortcuts. By default, the five folders on the top are dedicated to internal locations, such as expansions, instruments, expansions, documents, and programs. 
So by default, they are all on the internal locations of the MPC. But let's say I wanted to create a shortcut which would allow me to instantly jump to my external hard drive and the projects that are in that external hard drive. I can assign that to one of these five folders at the top of the screen. Now, please note that you wanna make sure that you're actually into the folder that you wanna create the shortcut to. So because I have projects highlighted here, I'm actually still just on the root of the external hard drive. So I'd wanna either click on the rotary knob to enter this folder or double click. And I can see now at the top, I'm going to create a shortcut to go to my projects that is on my external. All I have to do is hold shift and then tap the folder I want to be my shortcut, let's say three. And now I can go to two. We can see that it's internal expansions instruments. But when I hit three, I jump over to my external projects folder. So you can go through and you can customize all five of these at the top of the screen to create five quick shortcuts. Take some time, analyze what folders you go into on a regular basis, and then simply create shortcut folders at the top of the screen using shift and touching the folder. You can change these shortcuts at any time. So if you find that you're not going into a folder on a regular basis, but you're using a different folder more frequently, you can simply go to that folder, double check that it's a correct folder loaded at the top of the screen, hold shift and hit the corresponding folder to create a shortcut. Now, once you've set your five favorite locations, we can go below to the quick filters and the search to filter all the results that we see in the screen below. These are going to filter the results based on the folder you are currently in. Starting from the left, we have projects, sequences, programs, plugins, samples, and all folders, and then settings. With projects, most expansions will only have the demo project. So this filter is best used if you're searching through a folder structure that you may have projects saved into. Now a sequence allows you to load the MIDI sequence directly onto a track. For this, let's take a look at Peak Time Techno, which, shameless plug, is for sale in a link below. Let's load a sequence first. Let's say Zion at 128, then go back to our main, hit our grid view, and we can see that all of the MIDI notes have been loaded and added into this track. Now we're gonna go back to our browser, and we're gonna go over to the right, and select programs. For this example, we're going to load the corresponding Xeon kit. Now, inside of the programs, you're gonna find that there are two different kinds of programs. There are kits and there are instruments. Almost every single expansion will have these separated by putting kit at the beginning of the name or INST at the beginning of the name. This is a perfect time to use the search to narrow down what you're seeing in your results. So I type in kit, this way I can see all the kits that are located inside this expansion, or I'd type in INST, and I'd be able to see all of the specific instruments that are within this expansion. But let's just go back, we're gonna load the Zion kit in. We're gonna come back to our main, make sure that the Zion kit is assigned to this track. Also change the BPM, to make sure that the BPM matches the tempo of the sequence that you brought in, just in case there are samples within the kit that aren't necessarily time stretched yet. Now, another thing to note is that sometimes the sequences are longer than your default sequence length. So this default sequence is two bars, but if we scroll over, we're gonna see that there's a lot more MIDI notes within this sequence. So we're going to want to then take this and match it to the length so we can see all of the MIDI notes in here. And now we know we are playing back the full sequence that we loaded in. One more note on this, if we load in another sequence, let's go back here to another sequence and load this sequence in, it is going to load on the next available track. So by loading this one, Mind Games, then going back to Main, you're gonna see that it automatically switched to track two and loaded in the MIDI notes from that new sequence. It is still referencing the current kit we have, so if we wanted to match the kit with the sequence, we'd then go back to the browser and then load the corresponding kit to this new sequence. Now back to the quick filters, we have plugins, 
This is gonna be all of our plugin presets. Typically, you're not gonna find that in any expansion, so this is also handy if you're inside of a folder where you've stored a lot of your information. Maybe you have a folder that's not the most organized and you have projects in there, programs in there, and plugin presets, you would be able to quickly filter out all the plugin presets simply by hitting the plugin tab. Next to the right of that, we have samples. Samples is gonna show you every single sample that's in the selected expansion. This is also a very handy place to use the search above. Let's say we wanted to load in a kick. We could narrow down our shown results. Since most expansions have a lot of different samples within them, the search tab comes in really handy when you're in the samples tab. Then to the right of that with these three pages, this will show you every single file that is in that expansion. It's essentially a file browser. Now moving to the right of that, we have the settings for what we're displaying in the results below. By default, not all of these features are turned on. However, if you turn them on, it's a really easy way to filter and organize your results. So when we turn them all on, we can see that at the top here, we have the name, the size, when it was modified, when it was created, and we can simply tap on any one of these categories and organize the results by that. So if you had a couple of new samples that you just added into this folder, you could use the filter to show only samples, then tap on date modified, and it would organize the results based on how recently that was added. Now moving to the bottom, we have a couple of buttons that help us with the search results. So the audition button allows us to turn on auto, Auto means that by selecting any of the samples right here, we're gonna automatically hear them and we can adjust the volume of how loud that plays back. If auto wasn't turned on, we would be able to hear the playback of the file simply by hitting the play button. And also under the addition tab, we have sync and warp. Now, turning on warp will match the BPM of a loop to the sequence BPM, which is a great way to hear top loops or loops in perfect time with the playback of the project you're working on. And sync will actually play back that loop at the downbeat of the next bar. So it's a great way to audition any sort of loop you want live while you're playing back the project and it will be in perfect time and it will come on the one beat. So I hope that helped you speed up your MPC browsing experience, allowing you to create those shortcuts so you can quickly access all the files that you want to get to so you don't fall out of your creative groove. Now, in future videos, we're going to go over all the other screens, all the other menus inside the MPC. So at the end of this MPC masterclass, you are going to be an expert on the MPC. And on that note, thanks for your time. Thanks for your attention. Now, I hope you go make something cool.